So uh, these are some of the things I found to, to be relevant uh, trends of the times, uh, both the primary and the secondary score of them. Um, what are your comments or questions or thoughts on these matters? Let's take a few minutes on that and then get into a workshop where we explore some a little bit. Mm -hmm. But John, this whole area, I'll just call it the polarization of diversity, uh, how do you envision that the lead some corporations are taking can uh, effectively permeate social structures around them? Or are they just going to have to live with it internally and hope for the best outside? <coughs> What's your sense of that? I can give you a theoretical answer. Yes. Uh, it would be something like when you work with, when I work every day with a Muslim on the job, uh -huh. when I go home, I'm not going to think of that Muslim as a terrorist. Mm -hmm. You know, so it cuts into a stereotype right there just from exposure. So alteration of stereotypes through exposure sure. and experience. <clears throat> yeah. Much like World War II gave us foxhole brothers between white and black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John, just the thought on that, I was, when George asked his question, when he responded, I was thinking, I was looking down to that, that teamwork thing, that where people come together is not, is not around their identity external to the company. It's around what they're commonly about within the company. And so it strikes me that the way you overcome that is you focus on, and this isn't true only of business. It could be true of some of the ecumenical movement. You focus on the external mission, not the internal dynamics, or not the diversity. Yeah. But what we have in common is we're all about the same thing, whatever the company of the mission is. Yeah. The, uh, I want to go back to the question that you're raising on what, what's the assault or what is the what's back moving against, forces the, yeah, against <laughs> relative to the enterprise. And, and I think the, there's no question every organization that I know of a business uh, is facing this question of its relationship to the earth, its relationship to the environment, its relationship to that. Uh, and the ones I've been working with take it quote seriously, but the, the, the enterprise itself operates with, with such a short term mindset and such a short term time frame of its capacity to demonstrate to those who own uh, that it continues the profitability, that there's a huge conflict between what it's going to take to invest and, 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 and provide for the common good of our environment over against its requirements to produce on a short term. And I see this over and over again in you know, the companies that, like, uh, the whole question of, for instance, the company I'm working with right now in India is, is power and, and getting a coal-fired operation, knowing that, uh, and what is the source of the coal, you know, and in India you can get cheaper coal, but it, it uh, you know, burns at a, at a much more polluting rate, but the bottom line says that we can't afford to spend on good coal uh, because it cuts into this and so on. So uh, making these ethical judgments over against this demand for being responsible is a huge impact. I'm also the other day there was a, a program on TV about the uh, hybrid cars, how that technology is really saving the earth. But it requires, uh, what is the kind of earth? Uh, Lithium. Uh, lithium. 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 It's, it's something that's mined mostly in China. I get rare. The rarer. Rare. Earth. rare, rare earth. Well, yeah. Mined basically in China, and it's a very polluting mining process. So that anything that's gained by these hybrid cars that ride on this rare earth is lost in the production of the rare earth. That it, we, we got a complex situation. I didn't mention globality and environmental concern in this, but that's, those are also almost underlying. So I would decide any comments or questions. 
Well, I guess it, I guess it's kind of a good thing that the rare earth is like a big balloon because that pushes us to make get more opportunities for cleaner cars. Yeah. John, I didn't hear what he said. Different, he said. Try it again. Okay. Uh, I guess it's like a good thing that the rare earth is polluting, well, not like a good thing, but it pushes us to find better um, energy for cars. Alternative solutions. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. I was um, at a talk by Tom Hayden from the 60s recently, and then I got his book about the 50, 60s, 50 years later, as a trajectory of a movement. And I think another trend that influences all of these is this: the, the, the status of the um, dynamic between social movements, or the lack thereof, and what he calls the Machiavellians, the power players, on the reform team or on the status quo team. There seem to be social movement people and Machiavellian so forces. So it seems to me partly the corporate response to the environment is not directly to the Earth situation, but it's mediated by the state of the environmental call that's out in the culture. And the, the consequences if they don't go green. Um, so it's something to do with that. Um, the work of social movement building yeah. and um, practical successes is also what we're watching with the health reform yeah. situation. So if you have to decide between <laughs> clean burning coal and dirty coal, that's a lose-lose situation. A lose-lose situation. Context. Okay. Yeah. One interesting thing I've observed is down at teamwork section where corporations have tried to become more competitive to meet their bottom lines. They've tried to use the shared vision and the teamwork. And they've brought in a tremendous amount of training around that and experiences and people learning about their styles and how they relate to each other and a lot of workshops on diversity. And what I've had people say to me more than once is they take that home and it changes their lives with their kids and with their families and they start using it in their churches. I've had them say that directly to me, and that, hey, I got the brainstorming out at the church, and it really worked. Mm -hmm. So there's an interesting effect uh, of people that would not get that training anywhere else. They don't get it at school, they don't get it on TV, but they do get it in the corporation, and they take it right back out in the community. Yay! Hey. 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 what you said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I win. We just um, heard about uh, a book called The Leader in Me, which is by Stephen Covey, and um, his seven habits that are being taken into schools. And some of the corporations that are in the neighborhood of the school are connecting up with the school to support these schools that are trying to develop leaders. So there's a, that kind of Covey was really big in cultural corporations because he speaks to everybody secularly. They can understand it. They can apply it. And get a lot of use out of it. And he really reached around the world. Uh, it's in Malaysia, very big. He has books been translated a whole, whole lot of different languages. Now, we'd like to turn now and spend some time on another aspect of uh, the environment. That's the more human environment. That is, th these are some of the more social trends that organizations are facing. But there are also us people that groups have to work with. And there are basically two parts. I'm going to send, give you a worksheet to work from. And it's one is, what are the indicators of the human questions? Uh, like, what are people longing for? What are people concerned about? What are they driven by, fearful of? And what are the deep underlying questions? And first off is what are the indicators? Like, uh, and it asks for movies, advertisements, music, TV programs, news items, fads, books, or something else. What do you look for to clue in as to what to, for example, we live half time in Malaysia and half time here. In Malaysia, the typical ads are Rolex, 
a Gucci or a BMW or a, a, a Mercedes. In Denver, Advil, Lipitor, and Vietnam. <laughs> Those are different Cialis. It's different. And that tells you something about the people. Well, that's because if you don't have the Gucci and all that, you don't need the other. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, what I'd like us to do, I take this and work individually for a while, particularly on the indicators and then some other, and then work together as groups. And maybe, Blaze and Roseanne, you guys could come over to this side and we'll be roughly equal size. But see what you can come up with. Uh, have one and pass it. And uh, let's see together how we can uh, identify what are the human questions that are, that are driving people these days. Gordon. 